My friends, welcome to worship on this glorious Easter Sunday. It is a blessing to be gathered today as we especially celebrate Christ's resurrection through music and through the word and through prayer. Um, if you would not mind, there are sign-in books that are along the center aisle and along the... Um, the side aisles as well at some point during the service if you could register your attendance with us and pass it on down the row um, so we can um, offer you our welcome especially if you are a guest with us but as we continue to worship and to celebrate today we especially celebrate that Christ is risen Christ is risen indeed
By the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me around them. There were very many things lying, in, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will say sinews on you, and you will, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put your breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, 
and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and to the breath. Thus say the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into him. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus say the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place, I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite all our children who are here on this wonderful Easter Sunday to come forward for our time together this morning. Come on up. It is good to have you here. Happy Easter. Hi. Good morning. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. I am so glad that you are here. Welcome. Oh, I'm so glad you are here to be part of the story this morning. Good morning. Oh, it is so joyful to have you in church this morning. Because, friends, you and I have such an important job to do this morning. And part of it is the whole job of worship this morning. Why we all make an extra effort to be here on this special day. I know we're here some days and other days, but on this Sunday, we all try so extra hard to come here to praise God because we are celebrating a most important story, a most important and wonderful story. And... Some of you know this story already. You know parts of it. Some of you know the whole thing. And so I brought my story with me so you could help tell the story this morning. All right, you ready? We're telling the story of Jesus. We are telling the story of Jesus at Easter. And the story that we're telling today started such a long time ago. It started with a baby, the baby who was born. And Father, Mary, Father Joseph and Mother Mary held that baby close and kept the baby warm. But you know what? When that baby looked up into the face of Mother Mary, he could already see the cross. And when he looked up at the face of Father Joseph, the cross was there too. Oh, but they held the baby close and they kept the baby warm. Gave him everything he needed to grow. James, can I ask you a favor? Can you hold this one for me? because we're going to get out the next one. You could just kind of hold it on your lap so people can see it. Just kind of, yeah, it'd be good. And that boy grew, and he became a boy. And this is a picture of when he was about 12 years old. And he went to Jerusalem. And then Mary and Joseph couldn't find him. And they looked, and they looked. And do you remember where they found him? Where they found him, Maddie? They found him in the temple. And he said that really strange thing. Do you remember what he said when they said, why have you done this? He said, "Um, didn't you know I'd be in my father's house? Didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Here, Cooper, can you hold this one? And they were confused. Their house was in Nazareth. They didn't understand, but they didn't forget. And then that boy grew, and he became a man. And when he was about 30 years old, he went to the River Jordan where his cousin John was baptizing people. 
You can just kind of see the back of John's head here. He was a wild man. And he baptized Jesus. And when he came up out of the water, there were people there that day who saw a dove come down from heaven and come near to Jesus. And there were other people there that day who heard a voice that said, this is my son, my beloved. Here, Ryan. After he was baptized, he went across that river and he went, do you remember where he went? He went into the desert. There was not a lot to eat in that desert. He was there for about 40 days and 40 nights, and there was a voice that came to him in that desert and said, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you? And what did Jesus say? No, no, no. Jesus said, I am to be a king, but not that kind of king. Can you hold that one, Bennett? Thanks. Well, when he was finished in the desert, he went back across the river to do his work. Do you remember what his work was? Yeah, he taught and what, Wesley? He came close to people. What kind of people? Do you remember, Maddie? Hurt people. Yep. People that no one else wanted to come close to. And when he came close to them, they could see things they could never see before and do things they had never done before. Here, Bentley, can you hold this one for us? They changed. They were made well. Well, he also taught parables until he knew it was time for him to become a parable, and so he went to Jerusalem for the last time. And we started celebrating that last Sunday. Some of you were here and waved palm branches, which were a sign of kings. And he taught in the temple. And the temple guards said, we will arrest him. But you know what? They couldn't find him. Because on Thursday, he had gone to an upper room with his disciples. And he blessed bread. And he shared a cup and said, I will always be with you. Then they went to the garden to pray. And when Jesus was finished praying, Judas came out of the dark and greeted him. And the temple guards took him away. And the disciples disappeared into the night. That was a really confusing night. Here, would you hold one for us? Thank you. This is a sad part of our story, friends. On Friday, they took Jesus outside the walls of the city, and they hung him on a cross, and he died. And the sky turned dark, and they took him down, and they put him in a tomb, and they sealed it with a big stone like a door. And on Saturday, it was so quiet, you could almost hear the earth breathing. On Sunday, it was the women who had the courage to go to the tomb. They wanted to be close to Jesus, even if it was sad. But when they got there, friends, what happens when they got there? The tomb was open. He wasn't there. It was empty. It was empty. Jesus had died, but somehow he was still with us. Right. Especially like he is still with us. Like in the bread and in the cup. And that is a great mystery of Easter, that Jesus is still with us. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Easter. That's right. This is a joy of Easter. Now, the thing that's different about this one is when we see this picture, we know that this is still there, right? But when we see this one, we know that this is coming, don't we? That Easter's coming. We can't take them apart. They go together. Let's see. Hand that one all the way down there so we can see our whole story from the beginning to the middle 
down to the last. All right, friends, we have a problem with our story. Do you know what it is? What's the problem with our story, Ryan? It, why can't it be in a line like this? Because it's not the end, right? There's a beginning and a middle and the end. And if it's Good Friday was the last thing that happened, that would be the end. But turn your card around. But we have the Easter, which is like a new beginning. So we can't keep our story in a line. What should we do with it, friends? Well, show us. Do it. Can you stand up? Our friends that have the cards, let's stand up. Let's change our story. Oh, you can all stand up because we're all going to be part of this. I hear something about a circle. Can you make a circle? Oh, you think they can make one? Okay, I'm going to come down here so I can see the circle. Can you see it? All right. We've got to have room. It's a big story, friends. We've got to have room. You getting it? It's such a big story. There it goes. I see the baby and the boy and the baptism. We'll make it bigger. There we go. Can you see now? The story is everywhere. The story is everywhere. And look at the circle that we made with just us, too. Jesus is here with us. And the story keeps going and going and going. And that's the great joy of Easter. Can you say Alleluia? Alleluia. Let us pray. Let's raise our hands this morning as we pray and say, Dear God, thank you for the great story, the great mystery of Easter, of your love for me, for us. We love you, Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, friends. Thank you, Pastor Caroline, and thank you to our children for telling us that story in such a wonderful way. We are also going to hear Luke's version of this story of stories for today, and we are in the 24th chapter. Listen for the word of God. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. My friends, holy wisdom, holy words, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O oh God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So
So the question for today is, how can we keep this story from being an idle tale? Hmm? Because if it sounded like an idle tale to those who had followed Jesus, who had been with him as he taught and healed, they had been with him at the table for many meals, then how much more for us might this be an idle tale, especially considering our culture, which insists on empirical evidence, right? Where's your proof? And all we can point to are these stories. That's all we can point to. I think our hymnody can give us um, a handle at which to unpack this story once again, at which to, to find a word for today, for this Easter day. There's a hymn called Hymn of Promise that is sung oftentimes at funerals, but I think it is a wonderful Easter hymn as well. And the first verse goes something like this. In the bud, in the bulb, excuse me, there is a flower. In the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise. Butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. God, God whose resurrection power just infiltrates over everything that within a seed is birth, that within a cocoon is a new life form waiting to emerge. Hmm. If we could only see as God sees. And it seems to me that that is the summons that comes to us through this story, is to see as God sees, because the invitation is there. Because, my friends, God risks everything through Jesus Christ. We can go back to Genesis and we can see how much God wants to be in relationship with the man and the woman that God has created, but yet they choose knowledge over relationship. We see the extent that God will go to to be in relationship with those who have been discarded and enslaved because God leads the Israelites out of slavery. And then the Valley of Dry Bones that we heard Ryan read for us, where nothing but death seems to exist and God gives Ezekiel this vision and calls the breath to re-enter this people and the house of Israel is raised up before, before the prophet because God wants God's people to be home and to be whole. And then we have Jesus of Nazareth in which God takes on flesh. My goodness, my friends, does God really have to do that? I mean, think about a lot of our assumptions that we have about God, that God is God, right? God doesn't need anything or anybody. God can exist unto God's own self. Why does God keep reaching out and creating and calling us into relationship over and over and over again. God's heart must be broken over and over and over again. Because like Peter and like the other disciples who deny, who flee, who fall asleep, 
And then something that I think is really particular to our culture, we feel like somehow we're not worthy. Why would God want us? But there it is. God risking everything through Jesus Christ, risking a broken heart, calling us to not just see as God sees, but to say, yes, yes. I not only believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but I believe, dear God, that you will resurrect me and others. It is what we sing of on this day. Soar we now where Christ has led. God risks everything. Even a broken heart. And we are called to be the people of the resurrection. To live our lives as Jesus did offering compassion, mercy, grace to all the world. My friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you at this time as you are able to stand in body and spirit, let us together enter into this time of worship as we would proclaim this affirmation of faith from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
you make your way back to your seats this morning, congregation. I don't know, can you hear me? Am I on? Yes, I'm on. Wonderful. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you are making your way back to your seats, I want to bring to your attention some things that are going on in the life of the church. First, if you open up your bulletin to this section right here, you have this brown box with a microphone. This is for our listening sessions that we have scheduled. If you'll read through that, there is a sign-up table right outside this door to the right-hand side. And as you make your way down that list, you'll see a whole laundry list of things that are coming up in the life of the church this month and next. You'll see that the golf bowl is coming up Saturday, April 27th. A couple of things I want to make sure that you are aware of today. Immediately following this service, the UMW has an egg hunt that will be out on the church playground. So we invite all of our children, big and small, to go out and collect eggs. If you are one of the bigger kids, rules, you are not allowed to throw elbows. You are not allowed to tackle. And if you find the big eggs, give them to the smaller kids. The littles go first. So the bigs, you're just out of luck, sorry. All right, here we go. Want to make sure you are aware that Sunday, May 5th, we are having our children's musical. This will be at the 1050 service, same time as we are here today. Invite your family, your neighbors, your friends, your aunts, your uncles, your enemies. It doesn't matter. Invite everybody so that they can come and be a part of this wonderful children's ministry here at our church. And then finally, I want to make sure that you are aware that BBS and KAMP signups, they are live, they are online, and they are ready for you to sign up. We're not full yet, are we? We're not full. We need to be full by next Sunday. So go online and sign up, please. There is plenty of room for everybody, and BBS is free. KMP does come with a charge, but go to that church website, look for that registration tab, and sign your children up. Pastor Caroline. I'm going to add just a couple of details for those who are looking forward to the egg hunt. After service, if you'll go to this first floor hallway, line up under the butterflies. And the UMW ladies will direct you from there. Um, as we come to this time in our worship on this Easter Sunday, um, on your bulletin are names of our family and extended church family that we hold close in prayers and invite you to do as well as you go throughout their week. And some of these names you know and some you do not. Um, but we know God knows their name and we pray for them. In particular, this week we want to lift up uh, Betty Griffin and Diane Owen. And we also want to uh, lift up a couple of women having uh, surgery this week, Linda Pierce and Amanda Elliott. Our prayers and our hopes are with you, as well as all these names that are before you, and many that you know. And we bring all these names and situations before their Lord our God, um, particularly this morning as this community gathers on Easter Sunday morning. We also hold up our brothers and sisters of Christ around the globe in Sri Lanka um, and the prayers and the grief for that community. But we come today that in the midst of hurts and loss and heartache, that there is joy. That just because we are sad and we are grieving, just because we have loss, that does not mean that there is not deep and abiding joy from the Lord our God that we give thanks for and experience and we pray for this day. And in that spirit, may we join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we, your people, come before you this morning seeking to be Easter people. We are your people who have been nurtured by your spirit, by your presence, by friends and family who have journeyed with us. We have come together to this place this morning. As we have come together, the world outside has come into this room as well. And we bring those losses and those hurts those worries and those fears, those hardships, they are with us as well. And in this room, with your spirit present with us, we tenderly and boldly 
humbly and gently offer you those prayers this morning, knowing that you are in this place, knowing that you are always with us, listening to our prayers. And so we come seeking your presence, listening for your voice, hoping for a moment of your touch as we worship this morning. We confess, O God, that too many times we have sought the answers for our prayers in empty places. We have gone seeking and not found you there. We have tried to do it alone. We have tried to find answers by ourselves. We've tried to do the work and to perform. We have tried to gain knowledge that was far short of wisdom. We have let our fears overtake us. We have looked in empty places. But here in this place, on this Easter Sunday morning, we are reminded of the joy and the hope and the light of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that is with us now and each day, that is with us in each step of our journey. And so we pray that as your Spirit falls on we, your people gathered here, that our eyes may be opened to see your hand of mercy in the world, that our ears may be opened to hear your voice of hope and of joy, that we may know where you lead and that we may have confidence that in each step you are with us, that you have taken such bold and courageous and loving steps before us as certainly in these days you are here in our midst, that we may once again drink in your spirit and know your light and love and be comforted and have hope and walk in boldness as we go forth from this place into the world, that all would know the hope and the love of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is a joy and a blessing to be gathered together to worship on this Easter Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is a feast day unlike any other in the Christian year. It is the highest and holiest feast day as we celebrate with wonderful music and with lilies and Easter egg hunts and family gatherings. It's a real contrast from what that first Easter may have been like when the women went to the tomb and discovered that it was empty. And they and the disciples must have been confused in the midst of their grief after the trauma they had experienced of seeing Jesus executed in such a horrible way. And in the midst of their grief and confusion, they somehow became aware that the resurrected Christ was with them. They somehow were able to give themselves over to the new reality that broke with the dawn on that first Easter morning. The assurance that the risen Christ was still with them and the power of Christ's Spirit that welled up within them overcame the trauma of His death and the confusion and grief surrounding His burial and the empty tomb. God was doing something profoundly new and different in raising Jesus from the dead. And the word spread. It was spoken and proclaimed by the disciples. The word spread from Jerusalem 
to Galilee, and from Galilee to Samaria, and from Samaria to Asia Minor, and from Asia Minor through the Roman Empire and beyond. The word of Christ's resurrection and God's invitation to humankind to share in Christ's resurrection life is still spreading. It reverberates in this sanctuary, in the hallways and in the classrooms and the fellowship spaces of this building. It reverberates in the parking lot and beyond into our communities and into our neighborhoods and into our mission field. Come worship with us during the great 50 days of Easter and let us spread the word that Christ is indeed risen. The word spreads and it continues to spread. And your giving is what helps that word to keep spreading. As we reach out to the community around us, as we engage in the work that Christ has called us to engage in, your giving makes it possible, and I am profoundly grateful for your gifts. So as we prepare to give this morning and as the ushers come forward, we ask for God to receive our gifts, to bless them, and to multiply them for the glory of God's kingdom.
my friends, go from this place in the power of the resurrection and may the joy of Jesus Christ fill you and fill your days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. 